<laughs> the subject of art, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a great and profound respect, and I would say read your work, and I know you were just recently talked about Marcus in Gulf Shore Life magazine. Yes. So, you know, seeing this exhibition, I, I, happened to, I did a little documentary, but seeing this exhibition, exhibition now come to fruition, and maybe even seeing some pieces that you haven't before, would you maybe take me just through kind of your feelings about the evening right now? Yes, I'd like to very much. I, I really have strong feelings about his work. I don't want to repeat what others have said, but I'm primarily interested in the technique, you know, the use of oil enamel, which is a very sensuous material. And it, it's like, it's, if you've ever painted a railing or anything like that, you know how that rich paint is. And, and he obviously uh, thins it down by whatever thinners that he uses and fills it with all kinds of, he's not afraid of letting the work run at the same time. He will tape tape it so that you get these pure lines that, that develop through it and at the same time come back to letting things splash. Did you know that his technique is that he doesn't do preliminary drawings? He will splash on, splash on his color and then begin to do the composition. And uh, just decide what he wants to do. Now whether this is actually Marcus in the foreground, the man in the pink shirt or not, doesn't matter, but it's the it's his way of entering it, symbolically in a way. Also the use the use of the tire is a it's a symbol for him. It's um, indicates what we would call the his urban expressionism, his own choice of it. And so you have the feeling that he's thought it out very, very carefully. And I, and I feel, although I don't know much about his early history, what kind of mean streets he lived on, he certainly has mined mean streets and puts them into his work and, uh, and makes them more fabulous than they really are in existence. I mean, in reality, I think. That's why we call it expressionism, because it goes beyond the real into his own world of powerful expression. You can see from his body, he's a powerful man, powerful ideas, and it's reflected in all of his work, whether it's small or large, but the large pieces are just fantastic. Well, you have to remember that Marcus's background in Germany with the, his, his being taught in a school of design over there it makes him totally aware of what probably the man on or woman on the street would not really see. Primarily, they would they would know would not know how to enter the painting. But when I see it, and I see this tremendous gestural quality, whether he uses a spatula or a brush to drag the paint across the surface of the canvas and how thin or how fat he makes the pigments to create the depth of the painting and then of course the introduction of the, the symbols are also forms of sophistication. You don't really get that unless you know a great deal about what you're doing. Is there, would you mind commenting on a few that you are aware that he's using uh, re reoccurring symbols of Marcus Jensen's work and what they mean if, you're, if you have an understanding or your opinion? Well, for me, the primary one is the worn automobile tire, which is found in almost everything he does. And I can't think of a more characteristic symbol or actual personification of a mean street. Uh, in addition to that, there's also the, the, the lightness of the collage balloons that are frequently seen in his work. Um, it gives a, literally a kind of airiness to the experience so that you have a feeling that they're, they're, the paintings exist on many levels. It's not just a base mean street where you really wouldn't want to go. He infuses it with a kind of excitement by these elements that he brings into it. Uh, frequently there are animals. I have not explored that with him in terms of what each one means. A lot of pigs, a lot of dogs, Dalmatians, uh, other animals. There's one pa painting that's called uh, Disaster, I think, 
that shows a, a huge liner or ferry boat that is sinking. And amazingly, in the, in the rush of the water around it are, is, a, is a giraffe and I think a unicorn, a zebra. And then there's a wild sort of an electric blue line that goes through the pink of the sky. And I think it's a very exciting painting. Yeah, well, it's an energy. I really believe that he's full of that. It's nothing static. You know, no, no uh, fruit and vegetables on a, on a plate, no. As you look a generation or two down the road, you know, maybe two, three, four hundred years, how do you think Marcus Jensen's work will be seen? I think they have longevity to them. Uh, there isn't anyone that I know who's doing what he's doing. I think the imagination is, sets him apart from anybody else. Also, the vigor that he applies to the canvas these are all important factors. Now, mean streets, we have them with us. It's, a, it's as much a, a part of the way life in America is today in the early 21st century as you could find anywhere. So when we look back on time, as we often do in our history, you know, what characterizes the painting? Of what era does it come from? All, all painting does, very definitely. It has its own niche. Why? Because it's totally unique. People throw the word unique around. There's no such thing as very unique. It is unique or it's not. And so when you have it, you have paintings like that, you think, whoa, all the, I have the Rolodex in my mind of all the paintings throughout history. And when I see something like that, I'm thinking, I've never seen anything like this before. And that interests me. If you, if you were maybe to try to choose only three words to describe to someone who couldn't see Marcus's work, and you had to narrow it down to three, what three words might you choose? Powerful, colorful, and dynamic. I think he has a fabulous career ahead of him, and, and what I like about it, he knows what he's doing. He's a, uh, in the psychological jargon, he is a uh, obsessive compulsive. And I look for that always. I've interviewed many, many famous artists, from Andy Warhol to Victor Vassarelli, and they all know what they're doing now, what they're going to be doing in two years, three years, and everything fits into that. There is no, there is no what I call wobble. There's no wobble. You, you go into one exhibition of the work and it looks like this, the next time you can't recognize the artist's work. Art historians and art critics always like to see a line that exists through the work so that you can follow it. Even though the style changes a little bit along the way, you can trace it. You say, oh, I remember that from 10 years ago when he did something like that. That's important in our history terms.